Hey. Hey, Brock. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Um, so I just want to introduce everything. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our community event. Thank you all for joining us. I'm excited to be here and host and moderate this session. My name is Danielle, and I work with the PR team with Prequel. Um, just before we dive into this exciting discussion with our fantastic guest, Brock, I'd love if you could invite any friends who would also be interested in this live. Um, also, before we begin, I'd like to just share a few details on how our community events work for those whose first time it is. So we're going to start a discussion um, on content creation with Brock, and then we'll move to an open discussion. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask us, if you could use, if you see at the bottom, there's a little bubble with a question mark, put in any questions you have in there and I'll try and get to them as much as possible. And yeah, let's just try and be active. Feel free to ask questions and chat during the session. Please refrain from doing any kind of spam or inappropriate comments, of course. Um, so yeah, all said and done, uh, let's get the show rolling. So I'm super excited to welcome our special guest, Brock Wonder. So Brock, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you're doing well. I'm excited to hear all about your content strategies. Um, I'm sure some of the audience already know who you are, but for those who don't, <laughs> Um, could you please just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I am a, I always kind of introduce myself as a Toronto based uh, street and travel photographer. Um, but over the last year, I've been doing a lot more social media strategy. And so I have uh, two social media accounts at the moment that, that are kind of linked. Um, so I have Wonder Studios. Um, and on that account, I'm sharing a lot of content strategy, tips and tricks, best practices, content creation, BTS. And then over on Brock Wonder, I post my, uh, my street and travel content. So I offer uh, social media strategy work, social media management, but also content creation services as well with uh, a number of different clients. And um, yeah, it's just a little bit about me. And uh, if you're around Toronto, come say hi. Definitely. Amazing. Okay. Toronto, how's the weather there at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny like everybody asks that and i always just kind of go it's very gray <laughs> toronto <laughs> is uh it's like the weirdest city because the summers are just amazing but the winters are like just gray and cold and uh but we're almost out of it so we got totally. it's like the warmest day in the last bit two degrees so taking advantage of it uh, okay i'm sure you can get some amazing content as well in that kind of weather so yeah fits the aesthetic moody yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So um, I'm just going to jump into a few questions, if that's okay with you, Brock. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Sure. Awesome. So can you define for our audience what exactly content strategies are and how do they relate to increasing views and engagement? Yeah, for sure. So there's, uh, there's different ways to put a content strategy together. Um, really, like, and it comes in two different ways, if you're a content creator or if you're a brand. Um, but really a content strategy, I always say is, is the roadmap uh, to how you engage your audience. Um, that comes in a number of different um, sort of tactics that you can do. A lot of times a content strategy sort of rests on this idea. I talk a lot about in my videos about uh, content pillars and content themes. And so a content strategy is a combination of like repeatable topics um, that, that form your niche um, as a social media presence and, and how you find how to make those engaging. Um, to get views over time. And so let's say, uh, you know, for myself as, as a street and travel photographer, um, you know, one of the themes that I have is tips and tricks. Another one is um, sort of that more like carousel, like impressions of Toronto. Um, and then another one might just be a little bit more about like my personal life and what I share on my stories. And so those are my three content pillars. And the way that I share that with my audience makes up um, my content strategy. And then within that, you start getting into things like content formats. Mm -hmm. um, so my tips and tricks, like if you watch a lot of those videos, uh, you'll see like I shake my camera at the beginning um, and I'll like how to use leading lines and then I'll show like what a leading lines photo actually is. Um, so it really informs like what content topics you can pick um, for those content formats. Um, and then yeah, I don't, won't get too in depth on how to make engaging content formats, but essentially like you find what content topics work as a result of that, then you can increase your views because you know what your audience cares about. 
Um, and then the engagement side of it uh, really rests on how you format those videos based with those content topics. So like the camera shake that I brought up, um, uh -huh. that's like my hook. So that's how like people know it's my video and it also like catches attention because A, I probably shouldn't be shaking my camera. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, and B, it, it kind of just is like, what's going on? Like what, what, what's on the screen? Um, for yeah. Like, four page, that kind of thing. Okay, amazing. That's awesome. Okay, so they're very niche specific, I assume, your content kind of strategies. Um, and what kind of common mistakes do you see content creators make when they're trying to increase their views and engagement? This is like a big one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think the number one mistake that I see uh, is content creators copying other content creators um, from the start. Um, and that kind of like leads into two thoughts I have. The first one being that if you, you know, like like the, the joke that everybody throws out is just like, oh, well, you know, I want to be Peter McKinnon or I want to be like Matty <laughs> Hapoya or whatever, yeah. right? Like that kind of thing. And it's like, then all of a sudden, you know, they start posting videos that's like how to use a gimbal and whatever, whatever. And they're not, um, by copying other creators, you end up not being able to find your own niche. And really, if you're just starting out, um, the number one thing you should be doing is experimenting. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't really be worrying about if, uh, if your videos are doing well or not, like they're going to do well eventually if you end yeah. up finding the content that works for you. So it's really just about um, um, getting the, the pieces of videos and, and photos that like resonate that you actually care about <laughs> instead of just yeah. worrying about what works. For sure. Um, and then you'll find your niche and be better off for it. Yeah, because I feel like if, if you're just mimicking other people, it's you're not necessarily doing what you're passionate about. And I think whenever you're passionate about anything, it'll always come through with yeah, exactly. content. Yeah, for sure. So do you have any kind of tips? So your tip would kind of be don't duplicate probably other content creators. Yeah. Yeah, just experiment, like see what see what sticks like don't like, the, like the funny thing I, I made a video recently, and it was like, um, uh, don't niche too early, basically, I think I, mm -hmm. I could find it and, and send it afterwards. But like, you know, if you're a portrait photographer, who all of a sudden um, posted a video about like um, how to take better iPhone photos for street photography and that video got 2 million views, but you really want to share portraits, but you think now you have to share like something about your phone, like that conflicts, right? Like early mm -hmm. on. Meanwhile, you probably just haven't experimented enough with what content works in portrait photography and okay. you're, you're going to pigeonhole yourself way too early, right? So yeah. that's yeah. that. Just experiment and, and find what works that like you actually want to talk about. And, and if something goes viral, something goes viral. But if it, you know, yeah. avoid it if it's not don't, in your interest. Yeah, don't like limit yourself too early. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Awesome. And what would you say are like key factors in like catching the viewer's attention and kind of holding it? Like, how do you really do that with your audience? Yeah, this is something that I personally like, I, I love to talk about. Um, yeah, so, good. Yeah. <laughs> so like, if, uh, if I have a, a client that I'm working with, and they're like, hey, like our videos aren't getting views, like, what do we need to do? Or um, especially as a content creator, like just constantly thinking about ways to level up my videos. Um, there are basic content formats that, that everybody should really know. And then you can kind of get a little bit more um, tactical and like uh, niche on like what text looks like when things start show up on screen. But um, really it starts with your first zero to three seconds is that hook that everybody talks about. Um, whether that's a question that you ask or you open up a video with a shocking like fact or you're doing something in the video that kind of is a little like questionable, like again, that camera shake idea. Um, yeah. that's, that's like the number one thing that's going to get people to actually start watching your content. And then yeah. the job of a good creator is to like build curiosity throughout a video. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to like kind of lead people on through either a story or if it's like a tips and tricks type of video, um, you want to like find a way to not give everything away in the first five seconds. I know that sounds like a little bit, um, schemey, but you know, for viewer retention, it works. So yeah. like the thing that I like to do with my tutorial videos is um, I'll start the video and I'll go, here's how to do X. Um, and then I'll show like a before and after of a photo, or I'll show what the end result is right at the beginning and then bring my audience through the process of how I got to that result. And okay. that is sort of like, they're figuring it out as we go, because 
A, I'm banking on the fact that the audience likes what the photo and product looks like. And yes. then that way they just go like, oh, I need to figure this out. I'm going to watch the whole thing, right? So that's kind of like the way I go about it. In the simplest sense, hook, what's the way you get attention? And then how are you going to build curiosity through the rest of the video? Um, that's, that's the way you keep people watching your stuff. Okay, so you're like giving them a taste at the beginning, but so they know yeah, what they're exactly. going to get, but they're not going to get it fully out at the beginning. Okay, awesome. Yeah, because it's it, it's interesting because I feel like our attention spans are getting so much shorter and shorter. So like that hook at the beginning is so incredibly important, isn't it? A hundred percent. Yeah, and it's true. Like it's it's even it's so much harder now than it even was like two three years ago, and it's like hardly any time has passed. But yeah, it's just we're so yeah. like barraged by all this stuff. So, I know. Yeah. Oh, I know. And like, with <laughs> social media content becoming like shorter and shorter, then you have to try and like learn all these strategies to kind of hold it for longer, for sure. Exactly. Yeah, and how can you increase the level of engagement if it happens to go down? Then what do you think? Like, what would be your kind of tip for that? So, uh, so re-engagement tactics are really experimental. Um, yeah, it's, it's always a battle because I, I personally, um, when I've had to deal with um, low engagement for anybody, it's always very specific to a situation, um, mm -hmm. whether it's because uh, maybe the creator got busy and stopped commenting on posts or maybe um, they're just not as involved in the community. Um, yeah. most often it actually comes down to, um, content quality and keeping up with, uh, with trends. So one thing that, uh, happens a lot is a content creator when they're growing or a brand that's trying to grow an audience is they see a specific content style that works for them and they kind of latch onto that. And they, I kind of call it like a gimmick is you find a video that, that becomes yours. And again, like maybe it's like BTS, like iPhone um, content creation, you become that person and you have a very specific way to do it that gets, you know, hundreds of thousands of views in the first three months of you doing it. And then it slowly trickles out, but it's because the audience becomes so accustomed to seeing this content over time. Yeah. And then somebody else comes along and just knows how to like step it up that little bit better. And that's why your engagement's decreasing is because people are understanding what's working and really leveling it up. So okay. um, the engagement sort of like the way to boost engagement, I always say because more often than not, it's as a result of just not stepping up your content is to like every quarter, every three to six months, really just like do a full 360 view of what's going on in your niche. Who are the top creators in your niche? What are they posting? What, what are the view counts like? And just really assess what, where your content's at in that like hierarchy of quality. That sounds yeah. kind of ridiculous, but it's so helpful. No, it makes sense. Um, yeah, and then step yeah. up what you're doing basically. And, and nine times out of 10, literally it comes down to that. You're just really? behind on, on the, the way that, yeah, the content's moving because it's moving so quickly. And do you track uh, your content a lot and like where you are in your growth and everything? Do you think that's pretty important to do for content creators? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. You know, like the thing is, is like, uh, especially for photographers or filmmakers, filmmakers less so, but let's like, let's just latch on photographers for right now. Like, um, you know, you could come out the gate and, and pick a photography niche. Like if you're a wedding photographer, maybe you're doing interior photography because you want to get like Airbnb deals or like that kind of thing. Um, and you're posting beautiful photo carousels, probably like some of the best photo carousels like possible. I can yeah. almost guarantee you, you're not going to grow the audience because the audience doesn't necessarily care to see these like curated um, carousels anymore because so many people are, are posting it, right? So now either you have to be the best at specifically doing that or find a way to do it slightly differently by adding Different. video elements in. Yeah, and that's what comes yeah. from taking stock of, of your niche basically is you understand where the gaps are and how the best are basically curating their content. Okay, interesting. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> because I think like things are so like quickly changing as well. You do have to really keep up with everything, right? Yeah, and you have to find a way to stay on the pulse. <laughs> Sorry. Um, how vital do you think it is to like post consistently on your, on your social? Huge, huge. huge. Oh, and huge. how consistent do you think like that would be if you could do any kind of numbers? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, it's funny because, uh, so I had a, a recent video, I think like get over 2 million views, uh, specifically on this, um, 
for if you want to grow your Instagram account and you're new, how much should you yes. post to, to, to do that, right? And uh, I, I took a lot of heat for it because in all honesty, for most people looking to do this not full time, it's completely unsustainable. Um, and I, I'm fully aware of that. I think the yes. reality is though, is if you want to be successful on these platforms with how competitive it's actually getting, you have to go into it with the mindset that you will do this full time. Um, yes. And so my immediate recommendation uh, is four times a week, you're posting one reel. So okay. four reels a week um, plus two carousel posts and one static post. And you need okay. to post every single day for sure for the first like three to six months. Um, okay. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, also add on three to five story posts a day so that you build a little bit more relatability with the immediate people that are following you and they kind of like uh -huh. have that personal connection to you okay. um but it comes with a content iteration so you're you're getting so many reps in with how much content that you're making um as a result of um of needing to post that much you're just going to be better off for it um, but the second part is, is your job as a content creator is to always remain at the top of the interest curation that Instagram is serving your, your followers. So if you're not the first post that your audience sees every time they open up Instagram at a specific like point of the day, um, like let's say in the mornings, your, your, your followers wake up wherever, whatever mm -hmm. time zone and you posted off tilt from when they were using the app, you need to think that like, they're only going to scroll so far. So your yes. content needs to land in that. And that's why you have yes. to post every day because if you miss a day, someone else gets we'll put get in Eddie. place of you. Yeah. yeah. And that's the danger. And that's why posting daily is so important. Yeah. Okay. That actually makes a lot more sense when you say it like that. I understand that. And, um, say there's content creators who are still working say full-time and they want to get into becoming a full-time content creator do you have any kind of tips um in how to kind of maintain a good balance like because it is like another full-time job really yeah it's um the balance so this is like this is a great question yeah i think it really is um niche specific um so there are there's like niches that i basically say are like production heavy um, and then there are other niches that are a little lighter on production, but rely more on story to like stay interesting. So like thinking about like a comedian doesn't really need to have the most polished videos. They just need to be really mm -hmm. funny, right? Yeah. Versus yeah. a photographer like, or a content creator like me, who's trying to sell photo and video assets to a client. Not only do I have to post beautiful imagery on my feed, but I have to constantly be learning how to get better at it to offer it to clients, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think just recognizing the production value of the niche you're trying to grow in is super important. Um, and if you're not in a production heavy niche, um, the, the number one tip I would give is just to, to not focus at all on production and focus all on the story that you're trying to tell. So whether that's okay. day in the life vlogs that you want to share, or maybe, um, it's like, again, if you're a comedian, you set your phone up on a tripod and mic up and just record your standups. Like then you can chop that up afterward. And it's like finding synergies in your day to be able okay. to record them at scale is how you're going to avoid needing to like trade time to make content because you're just naturally integrating your life into what you're doing. Um, yeah. And inevitably that's why it's called lifestyle content is because you're just living your life and making your content as a result of and making content as a result of living your life. Um, and uh -huh. that would be my number one tip is like your niche is you. So film it and then okay. you're not going to have to worry about balancing it. Um, but it, obviously like it still gets a little obsessive. Like there's so many different ways to put it, but that's like, the number one time hack is like if you're doing something interesting that's on brand film it yeah <laughs> you know what i mean versus having to like curate content to, so, to engage think, like more natural content is sometimes better than curated oh for sure it's yeah. it's, it's better because it's re it's relatable with the audience and it's mm -hmm. also time saving okay so interesting and do you, you have like um say like even a cut off point for yourself when you're like creating content because you're you're so busy pushing things out and things like do you have your own kind of way that you keep yourself balanced yeah and i had to discover this the hard way yeah. <laughs> I, uh, over the last year like i was pumping out a ton of content for clients for myself like trying to just get everything going and, and eventually like you're going to hit a wall um if you're not careful 
Um, so my own system is, is like, I know what output I need for my goals and like, do you want to creep over that or not? And like, that's your decision. But I think just setting personal boundaries based on what you're trying to achieve is so, so, so important. Um, especially if you're, uh, like, like for example, um, you know, if you're looking to become the biggest YouTuber on the planet, like, let's just pick some insane goal. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have to do insane things to get there. Right. Like that's the reality of it. But if you're looking to advertise your business on social media and it's a part of your marketing mix, you know, I'm not going to recommend that you spend two hours a day making content to post. Right. So it's about just knowing your limits and what you're trying to do and, and promising yourself that you're going to adhere to that. Um, and balancing that with your other goals. Like if you have family responsibilities, like yeah. you need to adhere to that just as much as you need to adhere to your posting schedule. Totally. Right. So for sure. Because even like if you burn out, that is when you're going to affect the quality of even what you're posting. So you do need to kind Absolutely. Of find that like healthy balance. Yeah. And like, what are your favorite tips to improve, say, content views? Favorite tips to improve content views? Um, I would say, like, I've got, I've got so many Google Docs <laughs> and Apple Notes <laughs> of video ideas, uh, hooks that I want to try, uh, content formats I need to experiment with. Um, and so I'm constantly iterating on, on what I want to do and, and what I want to try. And I think, like, that's the biggest thing. It goes back to experimentation, but also like tying in that other idea with like, find what's working and figure out how to do it differently. Um, so okay. always taking stock of who's in your niche. Yeah. And, yeah. and bringing it into your own, uh, your own process. For sure. That makes sense. Yeah. And where do you think like, say a content creator, or any content creator is starting out, like where could they find these kind of tips and things? Do you post about these tips on your channel? Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is the second uh, channel. It's on YouTube as well, too, if you're around on YouTube Shorts. Um, but it's just Wonder Studios. So um, my last, uh, like, part of Brock Wonder, W-U-N-D-E-R dot studios on Instagram. Um, nice. And then on YouTube, it's uh, my handle here, Brock Wonder. Um, I have yeah. all the tips there if you want to check them out. But there are other creators that also provide really great advice. Um, I guess like a little bit of uh, a way to find the network is um, is through actually, I don't know if you know Stan, uh, Stan for Creators, the Stan store, the, the link in your bio. Um, there's a lot of cool like social media managers there that, that give a lot of really great tips and tricks um, for this kind of stuff. Um, but other things are like um, the later blog has a lot of resources um, for like, if you want to really kind of get a bit more tactical with your social media management, but Website social media today keeps you up to date on everything for social media. Um, they have lists Amazing. of books. Yeah, whole a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much for all of that. I, I hope I hope you all um, heard all of those <laughs> crazy tips. That's amazing. So much good uh, content. Um, and how can like storytelling be incorporated into content strategies to like increase engage engagement in general and create a more memorable experience to your followers? Because storytelling is so important, I feel like, with every piece of content that you give. Yeah, absolutely. Um, story is huge. Uh, I think, again, like, it really depends on, on, on your niche. Um, mm -hmm. and, but I would say it's bigger, especially as a content creator, is, is knowing who you are and um, having clear boundaries on what you want to share. Okay. Um, and so a lot of it, like, I'll, I'll use myself as an example, right? Like, the sort of um, like story that I'm sharing on my social media feed is that, um, you know, I explore Toronto. I have impressions of Toronto. I'm constantly doing street photography. Like there's that aspect to it. You know, on occasion, I'm traveling to different places around Canada, exploring what Canada has to offer. Um, and just like, that's kind of the narrative is this like content creator that that's like, you know, getting impressions of the place that he lives in right and, and exploring what it has to offer um versus you know a fitness influencer who is sharing their fitness journey so on their yes. stories you know they're sharing the struggles of counting macros or maybe they're on a run up to a show and they want to be relatable and and talk about the challenges of going to the gym like there's like relatable pieces of like a personal struggle involved with that whereas with okay. myself i don't really incorporate that into my story mm -hmm. um and so I would say like when you're, when you're curating a story in your content, it's understanding that 
every piece of content that you post on your social media feed inevitably contributes to um, who your audience sees you as. Okay. And you're constantly curating this narrative uh, with that audience. Um, and just, just accepting that if it is a daily post that you're sharing in a run up to a journey, like, like a fitness show, um, that, that inevitably like the experience itself is the story and that's what makes people relate to you. Okay. So it's like your brand kind of. Yeah, general. exactly. The story is your brand basically. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. And in your experience, what types of content tend to generate like the most views and engagement? Is it like you said, your tips and tricks or is it like your shaky camera? Like what, what <laughs> generally <laughs> um, generates the most views for you? Uh, so for honestly, I think, so there's, um, in, in all honesty, there's two types of content, education and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Entertainment content, I think, does a better job at building community and actually gets people to like vibe with you, relate to you, like create a personal connection. Uh -huh. Education content gets views. And so you can make a whole, uh, you know, presence across any social media channel about coffee tips and tricks, about mm -hmm. how to work out better, um, about snowboarding, um, like whatever, right? And mm -hmm. you then become the voice for that space. Yeah. And the views are just okay. endless. Yeah, because you're helping so many people with that. Yeah. Um, and it's like and I think, yeah, exactly. It's, it's free learning, like, and if you do a good job of it and it's entertaining, now all of a sudden you have a way to like grow this over time. I think content creators though that lead with an education presence that want to be like, like quote, like an influencer or like that kind of um, more relatable sort of persona on social media need to mm -hmm. find the balance between how they actually integrate that entertainment piece of their lives with the education. And okay. then you have a, a unbelievable social media presence, but only a few people really figure out how to do that. Amazing. That's actually so insightful and helpful. <laughs> entertainment and education guys <laughs> um and how can a content creator like balance creating informative and entertaining content without sacrificing like one or the other like so like like so is it just like a healthy balance you think and should like they start with educational content and then get to entertainment or is there like a structure that you think that they should follow yeah so this is um this goes right to the uh the content strategy piece and knowing your content pillars um mm -hmm. and so if i'm designing a content strategy for somebody i'm always thinking about what content pillars entertain and what uh, what um educate and and the literally the percentage mix of what gets posted obviously for content creators that's a little bit more run and gun but for a brand you need to understand the cadence of of what content topics you're posting to know what works to, to be able to grow it online um, so, uh, so is there a, a ideal mix? Um, I would say like, it, it's again, like so specific, uh, okay. but if you're, a, yeah, if you're a content creator looking to like, like, let's say you're someone with like 5,000 followers on Instagram, you've had moderate success so far, or like just a little success where you're like, Oh, like I'm kind of good at this. Like, what do I post? Um, I would always say lead with value. And so like, okay. the, obviously the advice is 51 percent for them 49 percent for you in the beginning it's 99 percent for them one percent for you everything you do is in service of helping someone else be better as a result of who you are and what you know and that's how people end up following your account yeah and then it's about slowly moving that percentage back so that now people understand that the person providing these tips and tricks is an actual person that like enjoys going for, you know, dinners on Thursday nights to, you know, whatever Korean food restaurants or like, yeah. you know, like those relatable, like nuanced things about you. Um, and then eventually you'll strike your own balance. And it also has to go up to your business goals. Like if you're only here to land new clients and all you need to do is get new photo work, um, then that's all you need to post about. But if you want to start incorporating brand deals or you want to start, um, you know, using affiliate links, like, then you start need to incorporate more of yourself and, and it just goes back to like, okay, am I actually achieving my goals? If not, how do I change that? Right. So that's interesting. So you really kind of have to kind of build that trust for your consumers. Absolutely. As well? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And how can content creators and how do you really kind of stay up to date with like the latest trends in general? Because like you said, you have to really be staying up with trends. Like how would you do it? Well, this is like, <laughs> this is like my, uh, this is like my, I, I hate admitting this, <laughs> but like literally like you're gonna, you're gonna go on TikTok or you're gonna go on Instagram reels and you're gonna type in random topics in your search bar and you're gonna awesome. watch the top performing videos. Yeah. And you're gonna find uh, new content creators as a result of that. And okay. you're gonna literally like, I have a whole, I, my Instagram is a bunch of different collections around different content topics that I think are growing or not. Like I have like, collections of like portrait photographers right now that like are doing exceptional work or I have like snowboarding videos that I want to film because I snowboard um, and I'm like, okay, how can I actually film these like differently than what's being in the niche when I go out with a 360 cam? Like those are all the things like you, you literally have to like, um, I, like if you look at my Instagram explore page, uh, explore page, like it's like it, very curated because I'm looking at things that inevitably help me in both my business and my personal presence versus like consuming just kind of like scrolling with what it gives you like you yeah. can't use the platforms anymore as like a source of entertainment you have to yeah. go in with the intent of like discovering what's trending and then eventually you'll make your own systems for that on like how okay. to keep it organized and like you know what where you're gonna put what like i could get into the whole thing but literally it just comes from like starting by looking at topics that you're interested in and then basically collecting the top videos and dissecting why they're doing well. Okay. And can do you can like can you usually like identify a lot of like say people online who are going to really grow by the kind of content that they're creating? Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And when you say TikTok as well, do you just put in the same kind of topics into it and then just watch the most views? Um, yeah, I mean, there's like ways So TikTok's better than Instagram for finding, uh, trending content, I think. It's and that's of, not it's kind of ahead of Instagram sometimes. I feel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> With like what videos are going to do well. Absolutely. TikTok is, is first. I like, I mean, that's always been the case, like where stuff would trend on Twitter first and then like Instagram would get it like six months later. Right. And it was like, I've yeah. already. already. Like... <laughs> yeah. 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 I have friends uh, who don't use TikTok and they, they send me the Instagram reels that I saw months ago on TikTok. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, you're behind on this yeah. one. <laughs> uh, um, but there are filters not... that you can the use on filters? TikTok. Yeah. That's yeah. the difference. Yeah. So you can start filtering for top videos, top likes within certain um time frames yeah. for instagram you don't have that ability okay. but tiktok literally yeah can like what if you figure out the filters on how you need to organize it you can literally get in the last week what topics exploded okay cool i need to like make an seo rank video for that and that's going to pop wow. off because yeah so i didn't realize you could use the calendar feature that's like super helpful yeah yeah wow. it's kind of like a hidden gem yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen up guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um and what advice would you give to someone who's like just starting out with content creation in general and wants to increase like their views and engagement but like doesn't really hasn't figured out where to begin so this may kind of relate back to our first question but in general what would be your advice for them um i think honestly um it comes down to the fear of starting and the difficulties of staying consistent um i think when I first started, because, because I first started as a street photographer, like building a street photographer Instagram page, and that later turned into a big TikTok presence. I'm growing my YouTube now, like it's, it's scaling. Um, but it all started with literally posting one street photography shot a day from a little European town I was living in. And the way I would do that is, at, and I was learning photography at the time. And the promise mm -hmm. I made to myself was the only way I'm gonna learn photography is by going out once a day and taking one photo that I'm actually proud of. So I would okay. literally, at the end of the day, walk around for an hour, practice with my camera, come back, edit it, and post that. And I think that exercise taught me how to create systems in my life to 
consistently create content and it's something that I'll never lose because it's just a habit at this point. Like mm -hmm. I know I need to walk around Toronto for three hours to get enough content for a week. Right. Like there's just these like things that you start to develop. So yeah. really fear of starting, just start, just do it. Whatever you want to do, just do it. You're going to suck at the beginning. I couldn't take photos at the beginning. Like nobody can do anything at the beginning. Just but don't yeah. worry about that is like number one. And then number two is design a system in your life to figure out how to get better. It's the same as going to the gym. You know, you need to go to the gym four times a week. Okay, cool. Um, 6 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever. Like I'm going to the gym. Like that, it's the same thing with content creation and, okay. and posting on social media. Uh-huh, that makes so much sense. So like creating those challenges really help. And do you have say like goals and milestones that you try and hit and by a certain time? Yeah. Yeah, I think with Brock Wonder, I was less um, prescriptive with my goals. Like I was more exploratory, really about like enjoying the journey and just like, like I, I really just wanted to, like my only goal was to get paid to travel. And, um, yeah. you know, like I was just like, I just need to take good enough photos and videos to one day get that client. Um, but obviously like you realize it's not that simple. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then kind of diving into the social media strategy world, social media management, you know, running a business around that, like how do you get clients around that? Like now I have like very tactical goals and I'm like, okay, I need this to happen to sequence these events, to meet these people, to achieve that. And like, it starts to like at the wheels turning. So I, I also really think it depends on like the person and what you're after, but, but for myself okay. specifically with like Wonder Studios and what's up there, like, yeah, I'm, I'm very goal heavy at the moment. <laughs> Amazing. And when exactly did you begin um, like your own personal one and Wonder Studios? So uh, Brock Wonder started, um, I want to say four years ago now. I was doing a master's degree in the Netherlands. Well, half of it Hello. in Canada. Yeah, half of it in the Netherlands. Um, in international business, which was, it's kind of crazy because my life is not <laughs> international <laughs> business at the moment. Um, and I was living in this small town in, uh, in the south of the Netherlands. Um, and that was perfect for street photography because it was like people in trench coats and like, you know, very well-dressed people in like this old timey, like it was the perfect spot to learn street photography. Yeah, um, yeah like I had no interest in it. And I was just like, I guess this makes sense. Like, let's do this go. <laughs> Uh, and then just iterating over that over time and obviously at the start of the pandemic like I had nothing to do so I was just like I'm gonna start a TikTok and whatever and like um, go with that but Wonder Studios has actually been in the last um, six or seven weeks um, oh, it's wow. grown yeah That's and amazing. so it's been been zero to I think it's we're almost around 50,000 people following that account now yeah it's wow. really grown quickly That's yeah. Unbelievable. That's <laughs> yeah congrats that's really Thank really you. good okay so i'm going to actually hand it over to questions from the audience so i just want to repeat guys if you do have questions if you use the little um bubble at the bottom with the question mark and put your questions in there and i will try and get to as many as possible so space boy uno asked is real is it realistic to expect expect organic reach on instagram anymore what are your views on that brock yeah absolutely um i i think it's it's still realistic um the the danger with organic views uh right now is if we kind of talked about it a little bit um and this is very very harsh advice <laughs> to be honest so like i'm caveating this with like i don't mean this in a bad way um but i think it's you you really need to understand the content quality in your niche and if mm -hmm. you're better than what's currently the average and if you're not better than the average you're not going to grow. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, it's just that bar is moving up every single month and like you mm -hmm. need to stay on top of it. Otherwise you completely fall off. And like as a photographer right now, I, as an example, like I know that to grow my account as a, as a photographer, I quite honestly need to be on a plane every single week, traveling to right. new places, taking photos and sharing that journey on my story. Like that's what it takes to be a photographer on Instagram right now. Um, and if you're not willing to go those lengths in your space, then, then you're not going to get organic views because yeah. you, it's just always whittling down. Who's the most special person that people want to follow, right? Like what's the most mm -hmm. unique lifestyle that can be shared on these platforms. 
Um, and that's what it's lo really looking for. And that's, that's what it, you need to get those views. So it's very toxic, but it's the reality, I think. It is, <laughs> yeah. And that's like the, the competition is just getting like more and more. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I wanted to ask Moises Guell, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I wanted to ask Brock if he edits his videos or he outsources someone else. Uh, it's a combination. Um, so a lot of the, everything on Brock Wonder is done by me. Um, and then on Wonder Studios, um, I'm building out a small team at the moment and there's, uh, okay. some stuff on YouTube coming and, uh, some other stuff in the work. So, uh, I'm excited for that. Yeah. YouTube videos are, can be the most time consuming for editing, right? Like Ginormous. They... Oh. <laughs> Ginormous. Yeah. I finally needed help where I was just like, I cannot do this alone. Oh, like... Yeah. And like, that's the only way you can continue getting a lot of content, right? If you kind of Absolutely. outsource that. Absolutely. Sure. Um, Echo, the narrator asks, is there any tips or tricks for musicians? I assume who are content yeah. creators. Yeah. Yeah, musicians is actually a really good, um, really interesting space, I think, um, because it's so accessible to post uh, what you do. You know, you're in your bedroom practicing and you can film and post that, right? Mm. And so I think, you know, it's, again, recognizing like in your niche, what's the thing that everybody can do? Well, they all can post videos of them singing or practicing in their bedrooms every single day. The difference is to grow as a musician is, is really about that relatability piece. So how, how can you communicate to your audience what you're trying to achieve? Do you, are you trying to get on tour? Are you trying to get signed by a label? Are you trying to create an unbelievable song? Are you trying to get to play at Ultra Music Festival? Like those are the things that like the audience is now going to separate in their minds of like, oh my God, like he's on his way to being able to be a resident DJ somewhere. Like, the, mm -hmm. you know, like those are the considerations. Um, and I just think that sharing those ambitions in relation to the music that you're making is so, so, so important. Or um, again, this is like that line of personal information versus like the brand that you're creating, but like maybe you had a recent breakup and you wanna share about the story that came out of that and how that influences your music. Or maybe there's been some sort of tragedy or maybe it's something happy that like, like it's all the personal connection and yes. the personal connection to the music. And that's, sure. that's how you're gonna grow as a musician, I think. Yeah, and even like music is so personal, sharing your own personal story behind why you created a certain song could even probably be helpful as well. Absolutely. Sure. Um, Absolutely. It, will this live be posted afterwards? Yes, it will. Sindre JPG. Um, Stephen Hutera it asks, is YouTube a better platform to focus on since you can monetize? Instagram users just scroll and like without absorbing the full content. So it honestly, it, um, it depends on how you want to monetize. Um, I think as a content creator, looking to create a career as a content creator, or at least have some sort of longevity with it um, for maybe let's say three years, um, YouTube's definitely going to be a more sustainable solution to um, like your monetary goals. Mm -hmm. But on Instagram, the power of Instagram is in building businesses through it and so a lot of the times somebody's going to make money from instagram indirectly it's not as a result of being on instagram that you then get paid per post but it's because yeah. somebody found you likes what you do and then compensates you off platform because of it um and so whether that looks like a brand integration which is obviously the most common type of sort of remuneration for instagram or it's uh, it's like a retainer contract for photography work because someone saw you know your your food photos like that's the kind of work that get you get paid for from Instagram. Um, but yeah. YouTube obviously with affiliate links and AdSense and that kind of thing like the, the monetization routes there. So there's opportunities on both. I, I like for yeah sure. I understand that specifically yeah. for photography like an Instagram is so important for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Yeah, the, the thing is, is uh, like, there's so many different tactics that you can use now. Like, uh, if, if you're, if you're um, like, th this is the best, if honestly, if I was starting today, this is what I would do. I would literally start a YouTube channel, vlog my fitness journey or like my day to day, 
and then on Instagram promote myself as a UGC creator. And so, and I would specifically like run my fitness channel in a way that I could integrate like products into so that on my Instagram page, I put out these fake UGC videos that brands then pay me for on top of that. So now all of a sudden mm. I have, you know what I mean? Like, and yes. then, so, and, and so you can get compensated by being an influencer because you're now offering those UGC videos to brands and your Instagram is your portfolio. And so like, you have to think about it that way of like, this is what you're capable of. This is how you get work. And your relatability piece is, is YouTube. Um, again, it's a question of like, do you have six hours a day to film yes. and edit and what I like, it's just so many like considerations, but yeah, if you're looking to become a content creator, um, that would like UGC creative right now, the rates that you can charge per bit. Yeah. It's like very great. <laughs> so. It is. Yeah. Because that's like the main, a lot of the advertisements, even on TikTok and things, it's UGC creators for sure. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of money getting into that as well. So if you can get that created around your brand as well for sure that would be helpful and like what do you think about like repurposing content do you think that's like king or like yeah do you enjoy repurposing content i actually don't um no if, no so i mean the here's the interesting thing that not a lot of people are talking talking about yet but i think it's going to become a subject in in just a little bit um i can't say how long but um, the reality is is wow like i actually it was funny i had this conversation uh this morning with somebody um, every platform can post short, short form videos now, but the reality is, is that what short form videos do well across platforms is actually different. Mm -hmm. YouTube shorts bases their content success off of SEO rankings okay. and searchability. Whereas TikTok is approachable, like lower production quality lifestyle content. And mm -hmm. Instagram is still the place to go for that polished aesthetic, the, the higher end luxury sort of um, lifestyle work that yeah. that is degrees of separation from what's being seen on TikTok, right? And so, mm -hmm. yes, you can cross post on platforms, but yeah. you're definitely not going to get equal results across all three. And that's why you have to curate. Yeah. Okay. So you, you want to create good quality dependent on the platform as well and create it for that platform. That makes a lot yeah, of sense. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, okay. Uh, Avish.nv says, I've been experimenting things with the help of Prequel, obviously, and love it. Thank you. And okay. He also asked, how can I find my target audience? Mm, that's a good one. Um, I think it starts by inventing who you want to speak to. Um, so every social media strategy I make, we, you know, prescribe a target audience. But in all honesty, in three months, that target audience will change because inevitably someone's going to pick up on the videos that is unexpected. And, you know, and you could look at that in two ways. One of them is, wow, you're really bad at making target audiences. <laughs> but the second way is there's actually un unexpected variables that show up in your content formats. And people actually latch on to things that you would never consider ever, like ridiculousness beyond belief for instance you might start a channel um about again photography tips and tricks but because you have a really cool wrist strap for your camera that nobody knows about or you have um specific ways that you light your studio like now all of a sudden people are watching your channel to get ideas on like interior design for your lighting okay. techniques or like you know what i mean and so your target audience like evolves over iterations and that core group might be there but it's gonna it's going to morph for sure. Cause like even watching your content, it might not necessarily always be photographers, but even just influencers in general, trying to get an idea of how to set up their backgrounds of their videos and things like that. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. Let's see. Is there any other, um, okay. Our space by, Sorry, Space Boy Uno asks, are most social media platforms moving to more of a pay for eyeballs formula? Mm. Uh, no, I don't think so. No. <laughs> I don't, no, I, yeah, and I think that goes to like the conversation of like, um, there's like two ways to look at this. Um, if you're a brand and you're posting on social media, the costs that go behind having a social media presence that works 
um, are ginormous if you don't understand how to actually um, contract that work yourself. Um, and so in that way, an organic social media presence uh, most of the times becomes very performative. Um, not when I try to do it, but I've seen this happen is, uh, and so you end up needing to pay to boost content because you need to get results on a consistent yeah. basis versus if you actually go the route that I've been kind of recommending in this, in this call is eventually you find out your replicable content formats that you can evolve over time and you know resonate with your audience. The mm -hmm. thing is, is until you get to that point based on your niche considerations, what your audience wants to see, whatever, you have like three to six months in the dark, not knowing if what you're doing is going to pay off or not. And yeah. businesses hate that. Experiment. Yeah, exactly. And so you need buy-in. And if you're a creator, uh, literally close your eyes and just output okay. and you're going to get there eventually if you're meticulous enough and reflecting on your work. And if you're a business, literally have a line item in your budget where it is a sunk cost because you'll figure it out, but it's going to be expensive and, and the organic use will come. You just need to be so good that you're separating yourself from the pack. Otherwise, absolutely. Then you need to pay to get in front of people because technically if you need to pay to get in front of people, people didn't want to see it in the first place. That that's kind yeah. of like what I Interesting. say. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I think that is all the time we have for questions. But um, I just want to kind of summarize everything that you did say. Um, <laughs> there was a lot. <laughs> there was a lot. Um, so like for people, for example, starting out, Brock was saying just start posting and experiment as much as you can at the beginning. It'll take a while to find your niche. It may even change. Um, your target audience will continue to change and make sure that you do have these content strategies. You can learn a bit more about content strategies and content planning in um brock brock's two instagrams he has brock wonder b-r-o-c-k-w-u-n-d-e-r we'll be tagging it below when we post this video and there's wonder doc studios as well yeah so thank you so much for agreeing to participate with us it was like super cool and helpful and you've given us so many incredible insights i'm so so grateful that you joined us um and yeah hopefully we can see you here again soon I thank you so much for all like your activity. Thank you for the questions and the lovely comments. I hope I got to most of them and I hope everyone has a lovely party say tomorrow <laughs> and yeah. a great rest of your day. Yeah. It, you, you'll celebrate a lot in Canada, right? Oh yeah. 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 It's a big awesome. deal here. Okay. Very good. Okay. Amazing. Well, it was so lovely meeting with you and thank you everyone and have a lovely day. Okay. Thanks Bye. for having me. Bye. Thanks Brock. Bye.